Hey, this morning we're in Psalm 145. Today in your Bible, Psalm number 145. I hope everybody has a Bible. If you don't have one, there's some under the seats. Most of our seats have a Bible under them. Hope you'll use that if you don't have one. And if you don't own a Bible, as we say every week, please take that home as our gift to you. We want everybody to have God's Word in their hands. Because if we have it on our hands, we can what? Get it in our hearts, amen? Hey, so we're talking about living in the greatness of God today as you're turning to Psalm chapter 145, living in the greatness of God. And we use that word great actually a lot to describe a myriad of things, don't we? We will say that meal was great. We'll use great for a meal. We'll use great for our dog. Man, I got a great dog. We'll use it for our kids. Ah, oh, we got great kids. And we'll use it for the weather in the winter. <laughs> Haven't used the word great for the weather in four or five months, but uh, hang in there. It's coming, right? We use great a lot, but we want to understand that the greatness of God is, is so far above anything that we have ever experienced or that we know. God's word says that heaven itself, the things prepared for us by God are so great that we have, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man. We, we need to really meditate on that. Really uh, let that percolate. Uh, I say the word percolate to some of you leaders when we're talking about ideas and we can't do it right now, but we'll say, let's let that percolate. That's a good idea. Let's let that percolate. Let's, let, let's think about that, right? Meditate on that a little bit. We need to really percolate, meditate on the greatness of God. We're going to do that today, but it is so far above anything, as God's word says, that we've seen, that we've heard, that has even entered into our hearts or minds that we've even thought of. Here's a good example. So last night, my wife and I went to the movie out at... Uh, Gulf Coast Town Center. And so when we go to the movie theater, a lot of you have been there. Uh, to get to that movie theater, if you turn right into the, I don't know what the main entrance is, there's a whole bunch of entrances, but you know, right off the interstate, you turn right in there. You gotta go through all, there's all these stop, stop signs and there's a lot of there's people walking around. So we go down the street to the light. We turn right and go down the street. We go like all the way around the whole thing because it's a big area. And we go to the back. So that at, the, at the last light there, you can turn right and you can go behind these buildings. Uh, it's a little, the last few buildings. And then you end up right there at the, uh, at the movie theater. So there you go. I gave you a little, uh, what would you call that? A hack, a movie hack. So coming out of the, of the movie, we saw a very good movie. I wouldn't call it great, but it was a very good movie. Um, so if you want to know what that is, you can ask me later. It was very refreshing. There was, there was nothing bad in it. There's so much you know, junk in so many movies, but it was, it was good. So we're coming out, and, and maybe some of you have seen this before. I've never seen a sign that said this before. My wife and I sat there. We were kind of stunned. So we're coming out. We get to the light right before the main road, whatever that road is. Right on the other side of that road, we're looking at Miramar Lakes, this big, uh, so I guess it's amazing, you can't see it because there's walls and uh, trees and you know, stuff so that you know, us commoners can't see in there. Uh, but if there's this sign right there that says this, and I've never seen this before in my life, it said Miramar Lakes, and if you live there, you know, I'm not cutting on it at all. I mean, I wish I could live there. But you're gonna find out in one minute why I can't live there. Uh, Miramar Lakes, number one community in the USA, so that was cool. I didn't know that. Oh, uh, and then underneath it is the phrase I've never seen before in my life. Homes from the low. You know, they all, all the signs say, say home from the low. And what are we used to? 300s, 400s. I've seen one for 500s. From the low, one millions. From the low, one million. And me and my wife just sat there and were like, we were just, our mouths dropped. We've just never seen that before. I've just never seen that. You know, some of you have probably seen that. And maybe some of you live there. Praise the Lord. Make sure you tithe. I'm just saying. <laughs> Do, if, 
if I see a hand go up, we're going to pass the plates again. That's just a joke. That's just a joke. I never do that. I never talk about money. You know me. But as we're thinking about that, we're just sitting there stunned, just, wow, like you've got to be a millionaire just to live there. I mean, that's just the way it is. And I was telling Pastor Jeff and Dan, and they said, oh, that sign's been there for years. It's probably, it's probably two million, a little low two millions now or something. But just, here's why I'm saying that. So, you know, we all know where we live, and then and you got Miramar Lakes, right? And Miramar, a million dollar homes. And uh, some of you probably saw on the news, uh, there's a home now for sale on Sanibel, uh, $44 million. It's the highest uh, of any home for sale ever in Lee County. Big deal, it's a, it's a record deal, you know, sale for sale. I don't know if they'll get that, but that's what it's for sale, $44 million. Here's why I'm saying this. We, we know what, where we live. We know there's, there's Miramar Lakes. Here, here's that house on Sanibel, for me. Up here is heaven. Up here is heaven. And not spatially, just it's up there. But up here, that house on Sanibel, Miramar Lakes, is in the poor section of heaven. Are you with me? Now that's just, I'm being facetious. There is no poor section of heaven. But God's word says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. It hasn't even entered, entered into our hearts what God has prepared for those who love him, for us who are born again. Amen? Amen. You believe that? So, so I want to take you to another level this morning as we get into the greatness of God because you've got, you've got Miramar Lakes, you've got that $44 million house, then you've got heaven as far as I can reach it. But guess what? There's another level above heaven and that's the God who created heaven. The God who created earth. Wow. Wow. We need to really meditate on that, percolate on the greatness of God and that's what we're doing today. We're talking about the greatness of God and living in that. What does that mean to live in the greatness of God and to not let anything, not let anything bring us down where we know God has lifted us up. So uh, let's look at Psalm 145, and I'm going to read uh, the entire chapter. It's not long, uh, verses 1 through 21. And we want to talk about living in the greatness of God. Let's get into it. Psalm 145, verse 1. I will extol you, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. And I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. We're going to key in and focus on that. His greatness is unsearchable. Verse number four, one generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate. There's that word meditate. Percolate, if you want to throw that in there, if that helps you a little bit. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts and I will declare your greatness. Verse number seven, they shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion I love this part, slow to anger and great in mercy. Don't you love the compassion and mercy of our God with each and every one of us? Verse number nine, the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. Verse number 12, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. It's not just a great kingdom for now. It's going to be a great kingdom forever. And your dominion endures throughout all generations. Verse 14, the Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look expectantly to you and you give, them, you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. 
Verse 17 says, the Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Last verse in 21, my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, open up the eyes of our hearts today. Every single one of us, Lord, is sitting in the exact place, standing in the exact place, here in the exact place you want us to be because you have something to say to each one of us. Help us to have ears to hear and take your words to heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Hey, I wanna focus on verse number three. If you go back to verse number three, Psalm 145. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. So I'm gonna give you a few uh, main points this morning. Point number one, God's greatness is unsearchable. God's greatness is unsearchable. So this is a Hebrew word, and the Hebrew word is kaker. I think that's how you pronounce it, K-H-A-K-E-R, for unsearchable. And it literally means unsearchable to seek out and examine. I love this part, or enumerate. Enumerate, trying to find the number, the total of something. Or deliberate, to, you know, you know how a jury deliberate, deliber, deliberates trying to find the answer, right, to a court case. So our English translation, unsearchable, means even more than that. It's to seek out and examine uh, or enumerate or deliberate. You can examine God's greatness, which we're going to do today, but you can't find the end of it. You can't complete the examination. You can try to enumerate, find out the total number, but it's incalculable. Can we count the stars? Can we count the grains of sand on a beach? Just one beach? How about every beach? God's greatness would be more. Just think about that. We're living in a day in which our best and bright, brightest scientists, I love this, are making these uh, incredibly strong telescopes, right? And they are seeing farther and farther into the galaxies and universe and and, and on and on and on. And do you know what they keep finding? More. <laughs> they keep finding more. They never find the end of it. Are you with me? That's just the definition of our God. He's just so much more. We, we have so much that we can know about him and, and we can get to know him, praise the Lord, in a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Amen. But we can, we can always know more about him. There's always more. Uh, I love the words that our scientists use, these, these light years. Uh, you've heard of light years, right? I had to look this up because I, I think I knew this at some point, but I forgot. But light years are how far light travels in one year. So did you know that light travels six trillion with a T miles in one year? Light travels six trillion trillion miles in one year. Uh, are you kidding me? And what do they continue to find as they're saying, we found this galaxy millions of light years, not, not regular, you know, but light years, trillions of miles away. What do they keep? They just keep finding more. They keep finding more. But you know what they will never find? They'll never find another Earth. And you can feel it in the way they talk, and I love them, I have no problem with them, but you can just feel it in the, in the things they write and the way they talk. We think we found something that may have been a drop of water a million years ago. You know what I'm saying? Because it's gotta have water if you can have life, right? And I read somewhere where they think they see a lake on some planet on some something some star like 
you know, trillions of light years away, they think they found a little lake. Guess what? There's no oxygen there. Uh, we keep seeing these YouTube videos popping up about uh, the, the, the Mars rover, right? And my wife is like, turn on that. Let's see what they find. I'm like, you know what they're going to find? They're going to find rocks and dirt. I'm just, can I just tell you? Every single time. It's rocks and dirt. It's just rocks and dirt. That's, that's what, you know, and maybe there's some gas or something. But they're not going to, you know what they're not going to find? They're not going to find rivers. They're not going to find an ocean. They're not going to find Mount Everest. They're not going to find, they're not going to find all these amazing things that God has made one of, just one planet for us because of his great love for us. Amen? Think about his great love for us, and that brings us to point number two. God's great love for us is undeniable and real, we need to understand his greatness is not just, oh, look at him, he's great. It's, oh my goodness, his greatness is coming down to me. It's coming down to you. His great love for us is undeniable and it's real. The first way we see it is our planet that we were speaking about. I love the whole, the whole thing about the earth that it is just set in space. It's just hanging there. It's just there, suspended in space, in the perfect place, you know, the distance from the sun. If we're a few feet closer, we burn up. If we're a few feet farther away, we freeze to death. We're exactly right, just happenstance, I'm sure. And then the earth is tilted on its axis, right? And it's rotating. Here's how fast it's, it's rotating. I don't know how fast it's rotating. But let me tell you how fast it's rotating around the sun. <laughs> because I love it that it's, on, it's tilted. None of us ever falls off. It's tilted. It's rotating. Here's the sun over here. It's rotating, rotating. And then it, as it's rotating, it, it goes around the sun. It takes 365 days, right, to get all the way around the sun. And it is going, how fast do you think it's going around the sun? 67,000 miles per hour. 67,000 miles per hour. We're just, you'd think it'd just be, shoo. and it is. If you were just standing still, it would be, be shoo. But do you feel, you don't feel, a shoo. you don't feel that, Right? You got gravity, we got all these things. The moon is, is somehow working with the earth. That's how one of the, one of the great uh, things that we see for God's great love for us, it's the only place like it in the universe. It's the only place like it. He created it for us. He said, here you are. And you know, back in Genesis, when everything was perfect and Adam and Eve, through Adam and Eve, sin came into the world, but my goodness, thinking about the Garden of Eden and how awesome that was where all the animals were tame. None of them ate meat. You didn't have to worry about them eating you. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, just so special. And then sin entered and ruined it all. But everything God is doing through our, our history is bringing Eden, the Garden of Eden, back in the form of heaven for every single one of us who will believe in him, amen? Heaven is the Garden of Eden restored and made better because he's not gonna let sin in this time. He's gonna change us to where we're, we're, not gonna, we're not going to go in that direction. It's going to be amazing. So the first way thing we see and the way we see God's great love for us is, is through our planet, through Earth, the second way, of course, you know, we have the symbol of it up here every week because we want to remember Jesus' sacrifice for us. No greater love has anyone than they lay down their life for their brother, for their sister, for someone else. And we find it in John 3, 16. Most of you know it. Say it with me if you know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? There is no greater love than that. The third way we see God's great love, we're only covering these three sort of main ways that we see. There's many more. 
but another way that Jesus is now preparing a place for us in heaven so that we can live with him forever. I already mentioned it before you. I want to read just a little bit about it from John 14, verses 1 through 3. This is Jesus himself speaking. John 14. Hope you'll jot it down. You can turn there too. John 14, 1 through 3. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. And at this particular time, in this context, the disciples were a little troubled. They were a little worried. They didn't understand about Jesus going to the cross. Why do you have to die? Why? They didn't understand all that. We have everything in, in hindsight, and we can have God's word to explain it. But at the time, they were a little troubled. And so he's saying this in that context. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus says, verse number two in John 14, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, here's the best news, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen? Do we understand the great love our God has for us, his greatness in his love for each and every one of us? I wanna give you point number three this morning. Our God's greatness is greater than any other God. And we're gonna use a little g because there is no other big G, capital G God. There is only one. Are you with me? But there are a lot of little g gods. These would be things that we pursue more than God. These are things that we would put above God in our daily lives. There are, there are a lot of little g gods. Let me give you a few. The devil himself, Lucifer, was created by God as the most powerful and beautiful angel of all. Some biblical scholars say he was the worship leader of heaven and that's pretty special. He wanted to be the big G, God. Let me read a little bit to you about him because he is behind all that is being thrown at us in the world today. Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 15. I want to read that to you. Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 15. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You weakened nations, for you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Verse number 15 Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, literally hell, to the lowest depths. Of the pit. Do we understand the devil has already been defeated by Jesus Christ? Do we understand that? Do we understand the greatness of God cast him out of heaven even though he is still powerful, more powerful than we are apart from God? But God defeated him. God defeated death. God defeated fear. God defeated sin. God is the greatest of all and is not even close. Do you believe that? So here's the big question. Why do we let so many little gods overpower us? Why do, we, why do we let so many little G gods overpower us? Here's, here's some that overpower us sometimes. Money. Money overpowers us sometimes. We make that our little G God. There is only one big G God, but we let that be above where it should be. How about fame? Some people chase fame. What about fear? Sometimes we let fear Rise above the greatness of God. What about doubt? What about sickness? What about sadness? What about despair? What about pride? What about being critical? What about bitterness? We can, the list goes on and on, but I want to say it once more. Our God is above it all. And we need to live in the greatness of God. He is greater than everything I just listed and anything you could put on any list, any issue, any problem, any situation, any circumstance. He's greater than them all. Amen? 
That means all the other little G gods are under our God's greatness. They are under his power. And as born again believers, our God is with us and in our hearts. And we can defeat anything that comes against us because our God reigns. Do you believe it? Do we live like it? We can say it, but do we live like it? Point number four this morning, let God's greatness that reigns over all reign in your daily life. <clears throat> let God's greatness reign, <clears throat> excuse me, in your daily life. I want you to catch two things here. God's greatness is central to all life. Everyone is touched by God's greatness. Everyone is touched by God's greatness. There are things in every single person's life that they cannot explain. Good things that may, many people call luck, but believers know them to be God's goodness. Everyone is touched by God's greatness. Number two, God's greatness is relevant to our everyday lives. It's relevant to every single day of our life. Abra think about this. Abraham was called God's friend. Jacob wrestled, physically wrestled with God. God saw an outcast named Hagar, do you remember that story? And spoke to her as she cried all by herself, about to die, thinking nobody cared in the whole world. And the God of heaven saw her and spoke to her and took care of her. Then God comes to earth by the way of Jesus and his disciples get to know him well, along with hundreds of followers. Then God sends his only uh, his Holy Spirit to live in our hearts so we can know him more and follow him each day. Folks, is there anything God hasn't done to show us his great love for us? He's shown us so much. He's done so much to show us his great love for us, to give us access to his own heart. We have his word, the Bible, a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path to follow his guidelines, his plans, his eternal purposes. We have his Holy Spirit in our hearts to keep in step with him, to comfort us, to empower us, to help us get to know him more and more and more. Think about it this way. You know Philippians 4.13. I try to quote it every Sunday. If you know it, say it with me. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say it one more time. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you believe it? Do we live like it? Do we live like it every day? I wanna give you three things and we're gonna close in just a minute. Three things before we close. Number one, that verse only applies to you if you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If you're not born again, if you haven't been saved and born again as a believer, that verse doesn't apply to you. You can't do all things. But if you're a born again believer, that verse is for you. That verse is true for you. Number two, that verse is God's promise to everyone who is a born, born again believer. It is a promise. God never lies. We talked about this uh, a while back with there are some things God can't do. Even though he's omnipotent, he's all powerful, there's some things he can't do. One of them is lie. He cannot lie. He cannot sin. He can't lie. He's made the promise that we can do all things through him. It's true. It's a promise. And number three, as we draw closer to him each day, we can do more through Christ because his strength grows stronger and stronger and stronger. I want to give you a quote. Um, I quoted it a long time ago, but it was from a men's retreat that we went to many years ago. And it said this, I hope you'll write it down. Some of you may remember it. It says this, I can't, but you never said I could. You can, and you promised that you would. I like it because it rhymes. I can remember rhymes. <laughs> I want to say it again, I can't, and you could put a little blank there right after I can't. And whatever it is that you feel like you can't do or you can't overcome, whatever it is, put it in that blank. I can't. But God never said we could. God never said I could. I can't, 
but you never said I could. But guess what? You can. You can overcome whatever it is in that blank. And you promised that you would. Amen? Fill in that blank with whatever it is that you're struggling with and tell God, I can't do this. He already knows we can't do this. But then let him know that you trust him with it. Put it in his hands. Ask him to give you the strength and the wisdom to overcome it each and every day. And he promises he will. He promises he will. Please listen. Let God's greatness reign in your daily life. Remember it. Think about it. Meditate on it. Percolate on it. It will honestly change your life. There's so many things you that are in commercials and advertisements that'll say it'll change your life. <laughs> so many things. There's really only one thing that can truly change our life for eternity and that's Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Hey, I want you to stand right now and as we get ready to say our closing prayer, we wanna sing a little song. I have it on the next slide. I think it's the last slide there. How great is our God. We're gonna sing this song. Let the Lord speak to your heart as you proclaim this. And then we're gonna close in a word of prayer. Let's sing it together. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Sing it one more time to him. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Would you bow with, a, with me for, with a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being so great to each and every one of us. Lord, we throw that word great around a lot, but there is no one and nothing Lord, may your greatness get into our hearts and lives and reign over us every single day. Lord, especially your great love for us that is unsearchable, unmatched. Your great love for us. May we walk in your greatness and your love for us every single day. Lord, putting you first every day praying with you continually in your word continually knowing that you will never leave you will never forsake and that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us go with us in that strength and power and compassion and courage we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and all God's people said Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Go in peace.